Okay, so now we're going to get into gender and gender development. Here's a look at the outcomes, and we'll begin. So first of all, what is gender? Gender is basically, basically the social um, constructed idea of male and female. Um, it's, it's not, don't think of it as a person's sex. A person's sex is, you know, how they're born. Uh, biologically, uh, male or female gender combines um, uh, the, the biology with the social ramifications of that as well. Okay, um, so males and females, you know, how much different are they? Um, there's a lot of similarities when you think about the only difference between us genetically, males and females, is basically the the Y chromosome in males. Otherwise, we share all the same DNA. There's many things that are the same. We have the same emotions. We have all kinds of things that work the same. We we process, uh, um, you know, vision and we process sound. We process hearing. They're all the same. However, there are differences and they are important. But you know, they're not real strong ones. But there are in certain things. And here's a quote from your textbook. I think is really worthwhile. It's compared with the average man, the average woman enters puberty two years sooner and her lifespan is five years longer. She carries seventy percent more fat, has 40% less muscle, and is 5 inches shorter. She expresses, expresses emotions more freely, can smell fainter odors, and is offered help more often. She can become sexually re-aroused soon after orgasm. She is also doubly vulnerable to depression and anxiety, and her risk of developing an eating disorder is 10 times greater than the average man's. Yet, he is some 4 times more likely to commit suicide or develop alcohol use disorder. He is also more likely to be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, color blindness, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder as a child, and antisocial personality disorder as an adult. Choose your gender and pick your vulnerability. So there's vulnerabilities for both males and females. And really the changes aren't that huge, but there are differences. Okay, and we're going to look at differences in a few areas here. One is aggression. So when we talk about aggression, this, these are acts that are either physical or verbal that are intended to hurt or destroy someone. Um, and there is definitely a difference when we look at the aggression. Aggressive acts carried out by males are much more overt. They're much more um, often they are more physical. Um, they're they're more aggressive. Um, female kind of will act out aggression. You know when we start to look at. Uh, what they do is when, you know, like the things like ostracism and using, you know, mental kind of abuse as, as their outlet for aggression, find, you know, they're probably just as aggressive, but it's in a, in a different kind of format. Look at social power. In most situations, you know, if we put a group of people together uh, in a jury, for example, it's often a male that will take a lead role. The males tend to take a position of dominance. Um, in social situations, uh, in you know, a lot of relationships that there are, in a lot of governments, it's about 80% of um, leaders are male, um, changing somewhat, but we find that you know, males uh, will, will tend to want to um, dominate situations rather than the women's kind of idea, the female kind of idea is more to work out situations. And that's where there has been some very good female leaders. And as far as social connectedness, this is true too. Men tend to be more on their own. They like to go uh, side by side with uh, somebody rather than face to face. Females tend to befriend um, people even at a younger age. They have you know closer friendships where they like to talk and communicate with one another. Um, males tend to not have that close relationship that they will share things and stuff as they get older. Uh, the And especially when we're older, females usually have somebody that they share things with and men don't. The um, When we look at things like the number of text messages sent, females outnumber males in a great a great way. And when we look, you know, have a look at your Facebook and, you know, look at things that are posted from males and females and see if you can find that there's some kind of similarity coming out of there as far as if can you identify it was a male or female without knowing it was because chances are most of the time you'll be able to more over half of the time now gender roles these are the roles society prescribes that's what a role is basically is what how you're expected to behave in situations so gender roles how you're supposed to behave in your gender now your gender you know when you're a little kid we think how does this start 
Well, it starts very early on uh, where, you know, you become identified as a male or a female. You, even before then, you, you can recognize female voices and male voices and it becomes two different things. And as you're a little kid, you, even the language that you learn, the pronouns um, start to differentiate between ma masculine and feminine. And little kids want to find out more about it. How are we supposed to be? So they will, you know, like little scientists will go seek out, you know, what are the things? If I'm a boy, how am I supposed to behave? If I'm a girl, how am I supposed to behave? And, and they look at that. And often, you know, the males are finding uh, in, in Western cultures in North America, you know, it's just little things that can happen that can be uh, either punished or reinforced. Um, somebody tells, you know, a boy gets, a, a young boy gets, you know, injured at school and he's crying and, and an adult tells him, hey, come on, you know, be a big boy, don't cry. Now the message is big boys don't cry. The other kids hear this. So if they cry around the other boys, they may make fun of him uh, or, or the toys that they play with. Um, so that's the, the gender role and basically how it kind of develops. Your gender identity is which part of that? Because sometimes when the children are growing, you know, they'll compare themselves into these um, gender roles. And sometimes they don't, don't fit, um, which we'll get to in a minute. But gender identity is which role do you identify with? So it could be male, could be female. And again, this has nothing to do with their biological sex. A biological female may identify as male. And this process is called gender typing where we we take on these ideas and, and the little kid becomes a scientist or a little person becomes a scientist and, and decides you know which which gender which kind of does he fit into which is he identify with um the, the social learning theory is kind of what we were getting at is this is through observing others and seeing how boys act how girls act or whichever gender that you identify with and then the um you know, the operant conditioning works on that. If you were punished for that behavior or you're reinforced for that behavior, you're likely to continue on with that behavior. Now, transgender is a term that we use um, to encompass basically all that their gender identity doesn't match their, um, their biological um, sex. So uh, you know, we can have all the way from intersex to um, you know, like, for example, cross-dressers, most cross-dressers happen to be male dressing as female. And, and it actually, most of them, most of them, though, with their sexual orientation, which is, has nothing to do with anything of these things we've talked about, the sexual orientation of many of those male cross-dressers is they are attracted to women. So it, it can be all, all different. Um, you know, uh, girls can identify as male female can identify as male and be attracted to female. They could be attracted to both sex. It could be attracted to males. Um, it, they're, they're separate things and there's many different combinations that are out there. And transgender is the term that we kind of umbrella all of them out. What about parents and, and your early experiences and your friends that you have? Well, we do know early experiences do shape your brain. This is a famous Rosenweig study where they had rats. He had rats and, you know, you measured their, their, the brain cell and we look at the connections of the rats. And so one rat you would have living in what he called an impoverished environment where there was basically just food and water and the rat grew. He was bored. He had nothing to do. Whereas the other enriched environment is like a little rat party house where, you know, they've got all the stuff they need. They got toys. They got other little rats to interact with. And then after a time they look at their brain cells and they found that those kids or those rats brain cells that were in the rich environment were much more developed than the impoverished environment rat, which is quite important. It's changed how we deal with a lot of animals, uh, in, in farms, laboratories. Um, it also kind of tells us, you know, as human beings for our children, we, it's very important to give them stimulation and age appropriate toys to help them develop their, their brain cells. And we know, um, like children that, have learned a, a fretted instrument or a stringed instrument, you know, before the age of eight, can they learn it and put it away, don't even touch it again until they're 30, and they'll learn it much faster because it's made an imprint in their brain. Um, this is a picture of a brain that shows kind of how our practice, uh, this is a finger tapping thing, and as they practice it, you can see there are more connections made. You can see right here, this is the original, and then now these connections are made, which makes that finger tapping more trained, becomes more efficient, and 
this is how our brain changes all the time. So when we're looking at, you know, we have the, the parents, obviously your parents have a lot to do with you, um, but how much credit and how much blame do they deserve for what goes on? You know, parents are really quick, you know, to put on that bumper sticker that my kid's a, a um, honor roll student. Uh, you know, they're willing to take the credit for that. And they're willing to feel really bad when their children don't do well, you know, ones that get suspended from school all the time. But, you know, how much that actually has to do with the, the parents? And what it finds out is parents usually take way too much credit for the good things and they take way too much blame for the bad things that happen because there are many other influences. We find from birth on, um, the environment only plays about a 10% role in the personality of the person um, even from the same family, you know, from right from birth. So about 10% is all. So there is some influence, but it is not a great influence. There's many other things that go into the, to a personality. So parents shouldn't take as much credit and they shouldn't take as much blame. The peer influence is, is big. Um, we know when you're a little kid, if you don't like to eat some kind of food, you're more likely to eat it. If we put it down in front of a bunch of kids that enjoy that food, you're likely to eat it. So you pay attention to them. You know, your peers influence all those things to get along socially. They they influence, you know, like the, the clothing you wear, um, the, the activities that you take in. They influence many things. Your parents, on the other hand, um, they influence more big ticket items, uh, your your values and your, you know, what you've you feel about education your, and your morality and, and all of those, you know, bigger ticket items, whereas your friends will influence a lot of the, the smaller things, which are important as well. So in adolescence, the physical and cognitive development that occurs, adolescence, by the way, is that time when uh, we go from puberty into adulthood. And this time has been stretched out where, you know, people your age have a great deal of time as an adolescent. Um, because we are maturing earlier and we can't be independent um, as early as we used to because of, of social problems, um, financial and, and all those types of things. Uh, when puberty hits, um, the markers, you know, for puberty, uh, it's not a matter of the where they unfold. And we'll give you a list of, of exactly how these things unfold uh, in what order. You know, for example, with girls, you know, it's breast buds and so and so on. Um, it's more a matter of when. We find that males generally mature on average two years later than females do. Females, you know, generally 11 to 13, males 13 to 15 is where puberty often hits, actually 13, 11 and 13. So again, the markers, you know, for females, it's menarche, which is their first period. For males, it's spermarche, which is their first ejaculation that they have your brain changes during this time too your brain is making lots of connections you grow up but as you go through puberty um into this adolescent phase your brain will also prune things so what it's doing is getting rid of connections that you don't use anymore and focusing on those connections that you do use so um, a good analogy is like you know pass through a forest if you stop using that one path, it eventually grows in, it gets lost. And the path that you use a lot more gets a lot more, gets a lot thicker. And that's what happens during this time. Also in the frontal lobes, we have lots of myelination of your neurons in the frontal lobe to make your brain more efficient. Um, so right now, your, your brain has not totally myelinated. It will, it's getting there. Uh, however, this might be why adolescence the the limbic system will develop sooner with all your emotions and all those kinds of things which can explain you know some of the the adolescent bad decision and and being spontaneous and, and you know acting out um, because the the frontal lobe is not developed enough to w withhold the information from the limbic system you're kind of like a little phineas gauge almost not quite as severe but along those same ideas Okay, so we're going to leave it there for now, and we'll be back next time with another video. We'll catch you guys later. Bye for now.